This is video number 11 in our series on our study of the book of Revelation, and we are going to begin with chapter 13. So now in chapter 13 through uh, the rest of the book, really, the word is going to be talking about a, uh, a beast system, but you have to understand that this beast system has one purpose, and that is to give power to the Antichrist system that's going to come out of this beast. That Antichrist system, so the beast system isn't necessarily connected with religion. However, the Antichrist system is. It is the harlot riding the beast. So it is a combination of church and state. As we're understanding who this is, which I'm going to already tell you that it's papal Rome. That is the Antichrist system that's going to rise. It's the little horn that's seen in Daniel. There is a video on this channel entitled The United States and the End Times. I very strongly recommend that you listen to that video because it's going to go between Daniel and Revelation and it's going to clearly demonstrate for you by process of elimination who the Antichrist is, Papal Rome, and who the false prophet is, the United States. I also have some videos around that timeline when I posted the video on the United States and the End Times regarding the Antichrist system that's being formed right now through NATO. You have to understand what our union with Europe means. And so those videos are going to help you to understand what's happening right now. And NATO being a huge military power, that is the main reason why they are forming. You're going to hear the language in the word about how the people look at this beast and marvel at this beast, who can come against it, who can wage war against it. So those videos should greatly help your understanding. I'm going to get, I'm going to brush over it, but I think that if you haven't heard those videos, it's, it, it may be difficult to understand some of the things that I say. We'll see how it goes. Keep it in mind. Revelation 13, the dragon stood on the shore of the sea. It had 10 horns and seven heads and 10 crowns on its horns, and each had a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, and, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but that fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. So you see the pattern of Satan? He hides behind idols. So when you are worshipping idols, including self, you are worshipping the beast, because he doesn't have problem giving some sort of authority to an idol. His intention is to destroy, steal, kill, and destroy everything that chooses him anyway. Well, you might say, well, how can that be? Because a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah, true. He's, his kingdom is not going to stand. Jesus was referring to his own kingdom. People worshiped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast, and they also worshiped the beast. For now, what is a beast? What did we write down in your book? A beast is a government or a system of governments. And they also worshiped the beast and asked, who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? By the way, that's what people are now saying about NATO. Pay attention to the way that they hold this up. And this is a union with Europe, with the governments who have had this antichrist, who have enforced this antichrist, forced it and oppressed others with it. It's an important alliance to fulfill these times. Now, one thing that I want to explain to you, because sometimes people take this to mean something that it shouldn't mean. This doesn't mean that we don't have brothers and sisters in Europe. That's not at all what we're talking about. What we're talking about is that the powers that be in Europe have always oppressed with the Catholic Church. So it should be significant to us that we gained independence in the United States from those powers that were oppressing us religiously and otherwise, forcing us to, to submit to this harlot, attempting to change God's appointed times, his calendar, leading us into sin, imposing taxes on us. I mean, there was no end to the burdens that it placed on us. And even to today, blaming a certain race blaming white people for its sins and abominations. The Catholic Church is the one who was going and purchasing slaves. The Catholic Church is the one who was 
conquering these different t- territories and colonizing them and claiming that they were Christianizing, which that's not the way Christ Christianized. What, why would they think that this was the way to do things? And Christopher Columbus came to America. He looked at the Native Americans and first of all, exploited them and had them tell them where the resources were. And second of all, thought they'd make good slaves. Christopher Columbus was sent by Queen Isabella. He petitioned her for three years for her to fund that voyage. Queen Isabella, a pious woman, fully supported by the Catholic Church, fully influential in the Catholic Church. That is who did that. He was from Spain. He was not white. And the English settlers who came during Thanksgiving were white from Europe, escaping religious persecution. They are not the ones who persecuted the Native Americans. Christopher Columbus and his Catholic crew are the ones who persecuted Native Americans. So we need to be getting our history right. We need to be paying attention to the schemes of the devil that he doesn't admit what he does. And certainly you have seen repeatedly that the Catholic Church does not admit what they do. They find out how much is it going to take to keep you quiet. Or they completely ignore what people bring to their attention. And the government systems go along with the same thing. Why? Because she fornicates with the kings of the earth. And many, uh, many of these servants of this synagogue of Satan are working in government. In fact, these governments are riddled with servants from this system. So if anything, we should be concerned for our brothers and sisters who are in Europe and have been affected and oppressed by this system. Those of us in the United States are very, we're very blessed to have had a place where we could go and worship freely. And we ruined it. We absolutely ruined it. We don't even know what we were given. We don't appreciate that people were fleeing Europe to come and worship freely. And now we want to join with them and all of the ideology, the satanic ideology that comes from that spirit of Satan. Why? Because we think that the work of our hands is going to make us a superpower. That's so dumb. When you think about what God has established and how he has said, if you follow me, if you obey me, if you return to me, your enemies will not rule over you. And for years, the United States was in that position and all nations hated us for that reason. But mm, no, we don't need you. We can do this by the work of our hands. Absolutely foolish. That is why we're in the position we're in right now. And part of what's being taught in counterfeit Christianity is that we have devils ruling over us. By devils, they mean the left. They mean Democrats. Well, the word I'm reading says, when your enemies start to rule over you, you need to understand that it's your sin that caused that. It's your sin that caused you to be handed over to that spirit. But unaccountable, entitled, counterfeit Christianity likes to point the finger from being their own personal accountability, which God established, to Satan's attacking me. And if this is what's going, if these are the people who are leading our country, it must be their fault. They must be devils. Well, I have no doubt the spirit that rules over them, but the reason that spirit is ruling over us is because of the spirit we've chosen. Verse five, the beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. This is referring to the Antichrist reign. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name in his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. Now look, the Catholic Church has been doing this for a while. That whole Babylonian system has been doing this for a while. And they've been doing it in the name, right? They've, they've been t- uh, profaning his name, saying that they're doing this in his name. But it's an absolute opposition to him. How could that be in his name? We've already seen the hints of who this is over time. And so many people have come and said, oh, this is happening right now. Or, oh, this is already fulfilled. No, it's not. This is specifically referring here to the 42 months and what is going to increase. Just because some of this has happened or we've been given hints, that is for our benefit, for God's people who are watching for these times to know what Israel ought to do so that we see who this is and what's going on. But again, we need to understand the heart of God and we need to stay with the timeline that he has established and not get ahead of ourselves. Because part of the problem is that every generation, there are people making up a narrative 
that isn't fully consistent with scripture. It needs to be consistent with all of scripture and the timeline that God has established. And that's part of the reason people are getting discouraged and they're looking and they're saying, ah, you know, every, every generation, someone is saying that, you know, that this is happening. It is happening. And those birth pains, those contractions are getting closer and more intense. But things need to happen in the timeline that God has established. That is why it's important for us to understand the times so that we know what Israel ought to do, so that we know what God is calling us to. Right now, the trumpets are blowing. What do we know of the trumpets? When I send these things, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and return to me, I will heal them, I will restore them, I will heal their land. Right now is a time for you to hear this message and return to God. And unfortunately, the majority of people who hear this message cannot be bothered to return to God. Don't be that person. They claim that that's too much prep work. Don't be that person. That is the work that is required in your heart. If you can't be bothered, he is not in you. Verse 5, the beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place. What's his dwelling place? We're his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Okay, so those who are not of him are going to worship this government. They are going to worship this beast. And in worshiping that beast, that system of government, you remember that the dragon gives authority to that beast. And so in worshiping the beast, they are worshiping the dragon. They are worshiping Satan. Whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone goes into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. And in Daniel, we're also told that they will be killed by fire. This is not a new thing. This has happened during the Spanish Inquisition. For 600 years, children were pulled from their families, kidnapped. God's people were burned at the stake. They were tortured on various devices, forced to admit to things that they never did, forced to live in ghettos, forced to, you know, Jews were forced to wear yellow bonnets, or there's like a, I can't remember what it's called, looks like a dunce cap, but like a cap of shame or something like that. Forced to wear certain things to identify themselves with shame as heretics. This is not a new thing. And by the way, this also happened during Hitler's reign, and there is actually a lot of evidence to show that the Catholic Church was very much associated with Hitler, in cahoots with Hitler, even though they like to paint the picture that they rescued people. Since when has the Catholic Church ever rescued anyone and not used that for their own sickening pedophilia, rape, and murder? Don't tell me. Don't tell me that they just loved and took care of Jewish people. They were very much in cahoots. It's the same darn spirit that was in Hitler that's in this system. So if anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. I'm going to read that again because that is the reason people will be here. It is an hour of trial and testing that is going to come on the entire earth in order to make sure, in order to test the hearts and minds of God's people. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. It's not a suggestion, it's a calling. Because if you're not faithful and you don't endure, you're not going to be saved. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. This is the false prophet, by the way. This is the United States, who ironically began as a nation set apart to be able to worship on this land, has nothing to do with race. There's not just white people here. There's people of all nations, all races. This land doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs to God. He set it apart 
for us to be to escape religious persecution and be able to worship freely and to be able to be free of our enemies. How are we free of our enemies? When God's people are in him. When God's people are obeying, they are blessed. The land bears its fruit and their enemies do not rule over them. In fact, they plunder their enemies. And he demonstrated that with the United States. And look what we did. So ironically, the very nation that God set apart. There's only two nations he's done that with, Israel and the United States. The very nation that he set apart is going to return to the vomit, is already returning to the vomit, and is going to be the false prophet to the Antichrist. What more could have been done for his vineyard? Why did it yield only bad grapes? Verse 12, it exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of people. Now, we're talking about war here, so it's very possible that what they're talking about in terms of the signs and causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of the people, that they're talking about also talking about war. It's possible. So let's just keep that in mind. Because of the signs it was given, to po- given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up, an, set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast, by the way, the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived is papal Rome. So we're going to read this and then I'm going to go into a little bit of a, um, a quick overview of the video that I did on the United States in the end times. This way we can, you know, kind of augment your understanding or, or bring the picture together. For now, you need to understand that the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived is papal Rome. She was, and then she fell. She was again, and then she fell, and then she's going to rise again. But let me tell you something. She may have lived here, but she's not going to live. She is going to be stripped naked. Everyone's going to hate her. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. Now, the image might be the Pope. That could very well be what is represented as the image. But the beast itself or the Antichrist itself is the harlot riding the beast. Is it not an image to have a man dressed up in a clown uniform having to bow and scrape and kiss his ring? Is that not an image? Did Jesus look at the coin and say, whose image is this? That's Caesar's image. We'll give to Caesar what is Caesar's. You don't have to have a statue. That Pope has been set up as an image. There is nothing holy about him. He is a sickening satanic demon and people worship him over God. He has claimed to be the vicar of God. Is that an image? Is he the image of that harlot? Is he the image of Rome? The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast. Doesn't mean he gives it life, literal life, because frankly, Satan can't give life, but he's giving figurative life. He's causing that image to be exalted. He's making it as though it's real. He's making it as though It's alive. But that image could not be more dead. The false prophet is making it so that the words that that image speaks must be submitted to. He's giving it life. He's giving it authority. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak, so that it was allowed to speak, and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. In other translations, it says, in your hand and in your forehead. I believe that that is more accurate. I think that on your forehead or on your hand causes us to believe that there's going to be something, some sort of chip or there's going to be a tattoo or we're going to be able to see it. But if it's in your hand and in your forehead, then you understand it's, got, it's coming out. It's coming out of your hand and it's coming out of your forehead And now you can understand that the mark of the beast that comes from your heart is going to come through your right hand, your deeds, through your forehead, your thoughts, and you are going to declare what is in your heart through your mouth. And why? Because it comes from your heart. You are not defiled by what goes into your mouth, but what comes out of your mouth because it comes from your heart. And likewise, you are not sanctified by what goes into your mouth, but what comes out of your mouth
because it comes from your heart. The Catholic Church would have you believe that you are healed through taking that wafer and that it somehow changes your body and that the wine is somehow transformed literally into the blood of God and the wafer is trans- you know, transferred into the body of God because they have this carnal focus to distract and confuse God's people. We do these things in remembrance of him. We don't think that literally we are feasting on his flesh and his blood. We feast on his flesh and his blood in the spirit and in truth, in remembrance of what he did for us and the covenant that we have made for, with him. That's a totally different meaning. But this harlot distorts everything to being about our carnality, to being about that wafer somehow transforming our body. It's stupid and ridiculous. Now, this is nothing new. If you look at the Spanish Inquisition, you see that these are the things that were done. People were forced to worship the harlot and the beast or be killed. Does that mean that this has already been fulfilled? No, of course it doesn't, because we know that this is going to be a 42-month period of the Antichrist reign. All of those things have been done for our sake so that we know what it looks like. We can conceive of it. We can sit here right now studying the word and saying, you know what? These things have happened. God has shown us that who this is and what's going to happen again. But we keep looking for a temple in Jerusalem, but we keep looking for a man who's an antichrist. We keep looking at Trump and Biden and other men and saying that they're the antichrist. The word has made it clear. We have to return to the word in order to understand. But those things have indeed been done in order to help us to understand what this is going to look like and that that system is 100% capable of doing these things. It also forced people great and small, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hands and on their forehead so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. I have already addressed this in uh, many videos. One video is called, This is the Mark of the Beast. The Mark of the Beast is counterfeit Christianity. It is Babylon. It is not going to be on your hand or on your forehead. It's going to be in your heart, and it will come through your hand and through your forehead and through your declarations. If you are not praying to be cleansed of all deception and to bring that out of you and you don't have the courage to come out of those systems that are flattering you because we know that the Antichrist is going to flatter those who reject the Holy Covenant. If you're not being changed, if these things are not coming out of you, you're going to receive that mark in your heart. It has to come out of your heart. And likewise, if you are not praying for those things to come out and it's, and God is not bearing that fruit of bringing you out of deception, you are not one of the ones. I am saying that emphatically as a warning in love. If you think that doesn't sound loving, I don't know what to tell you. You have a different interpretation that you've ingested from the world. I am telling you that you and myself We have to be sanctified of the deceptions that we have ingested. We have to love truth. You understand the language of the word that those who do not love truth are perishing because of lack of knowledge, not because it's not accessible to them, because they have not loved it. And so if you're not being sanctified and cleansed of the lies, they're still in your heart. If he's not bearing that fruit through you, that is what's in your heart. If he is, God bless you, you're one of the ones. That is the fruit of being in him. Now, I did promise to kind of brush through what I discuss in the United States in the end times. Please go listen to that video. I think it's really going to help you. A woman in the word is a church. A beast is a kingdom, a nation, a government. The 10 horns or 10 10 toes in Daniel are kings. At the time that John is having this revelation, Five kingdoms have fallen, one was, and one is to come. You see, you're going to see that in Revelation 17, 9 through 10. This is the eighth beast, and he is of the seven. That's Revelation 17, 11. God talks in scripture about a good woman, Zion, in Revelation 12, and he also talks about a bad woman, 
a harlot in Revelation 17, which we have not read yet. And she's seen riding a scarlet beast, which is full of blasphemies with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. We need to understand who is the church? Who is this woman who is riding a beast? She has to be a world power because Revelation 17, 2 says with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication. So she's got to be a world power. She has to be related somehow with the kings of the earth, with the systems and governments of the earth. It's not a small church. In fact, Catholicism means universal. This is a church that has been involved with the whole world and with major powers. And no church has had universal power as the papal power. She leads the world astray from God's word. And the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What is wine? Wine is doctrine. What is wine of fornication? She fornicates with the kings of the earth. She adulterates God's word with the world. She brings in pagan practices and she changes his wine, his doctrine, his truth. This church teaches contrary to, the, to God's word and leads others into spiritual adultery. It speaks on the authority of the world, not on the authority of God's word. Even when speaking supposedly God's word, it distorts according to the authority of the world. Many people have tried to call the people back to the word of God, and she has been arrogantly above questioning and correction. That's what was going on during the Reformation. But see, the mistake that they made during the Reformation is that they tried to reform the Catholic Church. Why didn't they just return to God? He never says, reform the cults of the earth and I will return to you. He says, return to me and I will return to you. Return to my truth, my word, my spirit. Not placing your focus on the Catholic Church and then trying to make a name for yourself. That was the sin of the reformists. That is the reason why this church has prostitutes that bore out of her. They facilitated that. Through what? The devil only has, has a business license to do business through you, through your sin. So if your sin is to make a name for yourself, if your sin is to speak on your own authority for your own glory so that you can be Luther and have Lutherans, so that you can be Calvin and have Calvinists, so that you can be Wesley and have Wesleyans. You get the picture? Paul said, who is Paul? Who's Cephas? Who's Apollos? I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, and only God has been making it grow. You need not say these things. You need not say that you follow us. So why didn't the reformists do likewise? Nevertheless, as they were doing these things, the Catholic Church, I'm not a widow. I'll never mourn. I'm not going to admit to that. I'm not going to respond to questioning. I'm not going to respond when people tell me that priest so-and-so molested me. I'm not going to be held accountable. I don't have to answer to anyone. Number three, the pers- it is a persecuting power. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus, Revelation 17:6. We don't have to look too far into history. Look at the Spanish Inquisition that went on for, I believe, 600 years. Look at all the people who come out in these days, the organizations that have been established because of the persecutions of this church. The lack of accountability, trying to pay people off, outright denying that these things happened, sending these priests to another location so that they can continue to hurt people and persecute, fornicating with Hitler, sending God's people into ghettos, making them wear yellow bonnets. Do I need to say any more for us to be able to discern and test the spirit, discern the fruit and test the spirit behind this satanic institution? How are we even calling this a church? We should be calling it a cult. Call it what it is. And what other group on earth has ever been able to get away with all of these things? and not be held accountable as a cult, and not be held accountable as a sex trafficking ring. Why is this being tolerated? Because she fornicates with the kings of the earth. She has been given worldly power. Number four, there's a uniting of church and state. So he carried me away into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, Revelation 17, 3. Remember that a woman is a church and a beast is a nation or, or, or a government. Therefore, this is a unification of church and state and is critical to these last days. Number five, we need to go through process of elimination. 
Five have fallen. One is. One is yet to come. Revelation 17, 9 through 11. The beast that was, is not, is also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. Revelation 17, 11. In Revelation 13, 18 and 17, 9, scripture reads, here is a mind that has wisdom. There's a connection to these beasts. John is carried away in the spirit into the wilderness, not on the island of Patmos. He's carried away in the spirit. John is there at a time that the eighth beast is at the time of atheistic communism. When it comes, it must continue for a short time. By process of elimination, five have fallen. One was a lion and was Babylon, Daniel 7, and was overthrown by Medo-Persia and was described as a bear in Daniel 7. It was seen as having three ribs in its mouth representing the countries it overthrew. Medo-Persia was overthrown by Greece represented by a leopard in Daniel 7. It had four wings representing the swiftness with which Alexander the Great took everything, and it had four heads representing the four generals who took over the kingdom when he died. Greece fell to pagan Rome, Daniel 7. Then papal Rome overthrew pagan Rome in 538 AD and ruled until 19, excuse me, 1798 AD. Five have fallen, all of which, in John's point of view, are past. Papal Rome fell to atheistic communism. Napoleon overthrew the papal power and established atheistic communism, which is the sixth beast. In 1991, the work of Reagan and the Pope overthrew communism, and thus we have the beast that was to come, which is the United States, the seventh beast. The eighth beast is one of the seven, so we do not have to look any further. This is a beast that was, so that eliminates atheistic communism and the United States because from John's point of view, they had not yet come, is himself the also the eighth. So one of these five is the eighth, is a uniting of church and state, and it had to receive a deadly wound that was healed. So papal Rome is the only one that fits all of these descriptions. The 10 kings in Daniel 7, Revelation 12, 13, and 17 represent the nations of Western Europe. What's being formed right now? What has been formed in NATO? And will receive authority for one hour and will be in league with the papal power. These are of one mind and they will give their power and authority to the beast. Revelation 17, 3. They are not the same, but are of one mind. And how are you of one mind? If you are in Christ, you are of one mind with him. If you are in the devil, you are of one mind with him. And so your ideology and what is coming out of your right hand, your forehead, and your declarations, your deeds, your thoughts, and what you speak are going to be of one mind with the spirit that occupies you. What spirit is occupying this system? So what ideology are you going to be hearing? Uh, What ideology are we hearing now? I've told you that at the summits, one of the biggest, uh, one of the thing, you know, points of conversation had to do with us overthrowing Roe v. Wade. And what a mess our country is in because we won't allow people to kill their babies. Where does that come from? It, the United States, exercised all the authority of the first beast, papal Rome, on its behalf, and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed, and it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven in earth, to earth, in full view of the people, Revelation thirteen twelve, The United States also is going to put power and authority into papal Rome. Because of the signs it was given, power to perform on behalf of the first beast. It deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them, the United States, to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived, Revelation thirteen fourteen. The second beast was given power to give breath, life to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak so that it could speak so it had it had some sort of power in its speech power to legislate power to enforce so that it could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed revelation 13 15 i want you to understand something that your deeds what's going to come from your heart is going to come out in what you in your deeds your thoughts your speech, whatever this looks like, whatever is being forced on you is coming from your heart. 
when Christ comes, you are going to be justified on your heart, not on these other superficial things. So you need not focus on these superficial things of what this is going to look like. You need to focus on what's in your heart. That's why I keep telling you this message that you have to pray that you will come out of these deceptions, that these deceptions will come out of you, that you will be cleansed, that you will be sanctified, that you will be purified, made spotless and refined in your heart. Because if that is not happening, you will not be justified. And there are many who think that they're going to be justified, but they will not. And you already know that Jesus said, many are going to say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we eat with you in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do all these things in your name? And he is going to say, depart from me, evildoers. I never knew you. You need to receive that from God, not from me. I can tell you the fruit. If you're bearing this fruit, then it appears that you're one of the ones. You have to receive it from him. I can also tell you that if you're not bearing that fruit, you are not one of the ones. Because I know that to be true because I know what he's doing in me. And I know what he's doing in the people I work with. And no one's exempt from it. It is very likely that religious laws are going to go into effect because history has proven that. We've seen that in history. And we've seen that with the Catholic Church and the Church of England, which has oscillated between going from Catholicism to uh, Episcopalian. It's all the same spirit. And frankly, all of those churches are the prostitutes that bore out of her. The Episcopal Church is no different. And history has demonstrated that when church gets involved in government, it always, always persecutes God's people. If God does not force church into government, if he says that his people need to return to him and their enemies will not rule over them and that he is the one who chooses their leaders, then that's the truth. He's going to choose who's going to rule over you based on who you've truly been submitting to. So if you want to do as the world does and submit yourself to man, put your hope in man, then that's who you've chosen. You have not chosen God. You have chosen man to rule over you. And in choosing man, the devil gives authority to idols in order that you would worship him. What do you think God is demonstrating with all of these people who are worshiping and exalting and idolizing President Trump? I actually appreciate some of the policies that he implemented, but he is not my God. In fact, I don't even (laughs) discern the fruit that's coming from him to be good fruit. He demands submission. He demands exaltation. He demands praise. He's not a servant. That's not the way God's servants behave. It's very problematic what people are doing right now. I do not agree with it at all. And I'm not telling you who to vote for. And I'm also definitely not telling you to vote for the Democratic Party, which stands for abortion and murder of God's children. But what I'm trying to say is that we're not supposed to place our trust in these things, in human beings. We're supposed to place our trust in God and what he established and what he said was not get out there and vote. What he said is return to me and your enemies won't rule over you. So if devils are in leadership, that's because we chose devils to rule over us, not through voting, through submission. So they will indeed wage war against the lamb, but the lamb will triumph over them because he is Lord of lords and king of kings and with him will be his called chosen, and faithful followers. All right, so I went over this very quickly as promised. However, if you would like a more in-depth, and I highly recommend that you get very familiar with uh, the ways that the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation interact so that you can understand why it is that the word of God tells us exactly who the Antichrist system is going to be. I also want to mention that What I just described there was taken from a sermon by Kenneth Cox in 2011. Now, Kenneth Cox is a, was, excuse me, a Seventh-day Adventist. He's since deceased, but he was a Seventh-day Adventist. I want you to understand something. I do not endorse all of Kenneth Cox's teachings. I appreciate this teaching. I actually think that he did a fabulous job doing this teaching, but the reason why I do the teaching 
and I don't recommend, I don't refer you over to his videos is because I don't want you to think that I'm endorsing him. He was very obviously in a cult that follows a false prophet that is associated with false teachings and uh, deeply entrenched in the sciences, which are anti-Christ. That is very problematic. So the reason I did the video is because I could, I, I can control what it is that I'm teaching and whether that is true or not. And I've received it from God. But I want you to know that I do not endorse all of his teachings, but I think that he did a, a, a very good job in this. And one of the things that I really appreciate about him in the way that he laid out that teaching is that he's strictly going on the book, the, the word of God. And he was interacting with the audience and asking him now, what is a woman? Now, what is a beast? Now, what is a, you know, and he's, speaking on the word and he requires everyone in the way that he teaches, he's requiring them to be in the word, to be standing on the word and not to just be listening to what he's saying. So I appreciate that about him, but uh, some of his other sermons, I just do not, I simply do not agree with. Use discernment by the Holy Spirit. Always discern the things I say as well. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video.